So who is a good candidate for a medial unicompartmentalental knee replacement? Um, it can be someone of, of any age um, and someone who fits the criteria for, for the unicompartmental knee replacement. That being that they have to have isolated medial compartment uh, arthritis. So no arthritis affecting the other compartments of the knee being the lateral compartment and the patellofemoral joint. Um, they have to have an intact anterior cruciate ligament and no evidence of any inflammatory arthropathy, that being rheumatoid arthritis or, or some systemic arthritis um, that is likely to mean that they are more likely to develop arthritic changes into other parts of the knee. So if we do a medial compartmental knee replacement, they're more likely to need a total knee replacement sooner. Um, and those are, those are the main criteria. So when it comes to assessing a patient, obviously the history that um, they, they've got uh, significant pain and have exhausted non-operative treatment, um, that being physio, uh, injections with uh, steroid and local anaesthetic or hyaluronic acid injections. And if those non-operative treatment options have failed and a patient has isolated pain to the medial side of the knee, intact ACL on examination, and no evidence of an inflammatory arthropathy, then they'd be very good candidates for a medial unicompartmental knee replacement. The benefits of a medial compartment knee replacement are uh, very significant. I'm a, I'm a really big believer in the medial unicompartmental knee replacement uh, as a procedure because it really does provide significant improvement in patients knee function and um, patient satisfaction scores after the surgery. Uh, patients tend to have improved range of motion compared to a total knee replacement. And the other significant advantage and the reason why I believe there are better patient satisfaction scores and function scores is that with the medial compartmental knee replacement, the anterior cruciate ligament does not need to be sacrificed. In a total knee replacement, it's the requirement to remove the cruciate ligaments. And within those cruciate ligaments, there are uh, lots of proprioceptive nerve fibers. So giving lots of feedback to the brain about the position of the knee, the tension on the knee, and all that, that feedback is, is lost with a total knee replacement. Maintaining those cruciate ligaments in a partial knee replacement really provides the patient with a much better chance of, of having a knee that feels like their old knee and the, the chance of, of having a knee that, you know, they forget that they've had it replaced. Whereas with a total knee replacement, it can often feel a little bit mechanical and you avoid that with a partial knee replacement. So those are the benefits of the partial knee replacement. The risks really are, are, the, are the same risks as that for a total knee replacement in the sort of broad generic terms. So that's risk of infection. We give antibiotics at the time of surgery to reduce the risk. Uh, risk of blood clots. We give blood thinning medication to reduce the risk of blood clots. Um, risk of stiffness. And it's very important that patients work on their physio afterwards and get the knee moving uh, uh, straight away. Less chance of stiffness with a medial unicompartmental knee replacement compared to a total knee replacement. Patients more likely to achieve ranges of motion to in excess of, of 120 to 130 degrees. Um, other risks, risks of fracture, um, and um, need for revision surgery. Uh, the only different risks really added to um, uh, with, a, with a partial knee compared to a total knee is that there is a risk of progression of arthritis whereby the other parts of the knee can develop arthritis later, later on and require revision surgery if they become symptomatic. The risk of progression of arthritis is about 10% of patients at 10 years developing progression of arthritis that requires revision. And so you know, the vast majority of patients are still maintaining their partial knee replacements out to beyond 20, 15 to 20 years. And um, the only other complication with the medial unicompartmental knee replacement is that of meniscal bearing dislocation. That's where the insert can dislocate out of the joint, but um, that is a very low risk. 
So what to expect after a unicompartmental knee replacement? Well, you come in for surgery, have the operation done. Some patients can have the surgery as a, as a day case procedure. Um, uh, most patients are going home day one or day two postoperatively. Um, and that's having passed physio, uh, which will involve walking and having been able to go up and down the stairs. Generally, patients start off walking with crutches, although some patients can, you can mobilize full weight bearing on the knee replacement from the get-go. So it's not a, a prerequisite, it's just that it can be you know, a bit painful and patients prefer to have crutches to support themselves. Um, patients require relatively strong painkillers for the first week or two after surgery, and then fairly rapidly tailing down. And generally, patients by four to six weeks after the operation are in a position where they are better than what they were before the operation. By that, I mean that they're, they're noticing that they're now getting an improved range of motion from what they would have been preoperatively and also starting to mobilize better than what they were preoperatively. And they're likely have, to have come down off their stronger painkillers onto more regular painkillers. And indeed, a lot of patients may be off painkillers uh, completely by that stage. Complications that can develop following a unicompartmental knee replacement. There are most complications are, are fairly similar to that of the total knee replacement. So there's a risk of infection of about 0.5%. We give antibiotics at the time of surgery to reduce the risk. Obviously, meticulous surgical technique to further reduce the risk as well. Uh, risk of blood clots in the region of about 2% with um, uh, use of blood thinning medication to, to reduce the risk of blood clots. Uh, stiffness can develop, but generally patients um, who do, do the physio work um, don't develop stiffness after a partial knee replacement. It's more common with total knee replacements. A fracture can occur, but that is rare. Um, lateral progression of arthritis, uh, risk of that, so where the other unreplaced parts of the joint, so either the lateral part of the joint or the patellofemoral joint can become symptomatic with arthritis at a later date. There's a risk of 10% of patients developing progression of arthritis that requires revision. So it's pretty low, um, that, that risk rate of requiring revision for progression of arthritis. As a knee replacement, it is a mechanical joint, so it does wear out and can loosen. The risk of that is about um, uh, is, is between the, the life expectancy of a, of a knee replacement, of a partial knee replacement, is about 15 to 20 years, after which it can wear out and require revision surgery. Those are the main risks um, and complications. There's generally always a solution for them. Um, and like, like I say, you know, the advantages of a partial knee replacement uh, really do in the right patient outweigh the performance of a total knee replacement and I certainly recommend it as a uh, as a really great solution for isolated medial unicompartmental osteoarthritis.